Hi guys, welcome back to a new series on my channel. I'm starting called Testimony Tuesdays. So last year when I shared my baptism and my testimony, I mentioned I wanted to do this type of video, but I never got around to it. So this year I'm making sure that I do that. And basically I just want to share testimonies from my life, what God has done in my life and just really glorify him. I don't want this channel to be about all about me because it's not all about me. So I figured this would be a really good way just to incorporate more of God into my videos. And I have so many testimonies to share. So I'm very excited today's video i feel like is like the perfect topic to talk about as i introduce the series and that is going to be my jesus encounter so basically the encounter that changed my life forever i feel that it's a common thing to ask people when was like the moment of your salvation when was the moment you needed jesus or like the moment you met jesus and everything changed so i'm going to share my personal experience with you guys today last year when i shared my testimony um if you haven't seen it, I'll link it below because I feel like that gives you a better backstory and better understanding of like my life and my journey and how I kind of got to this point. But if you haven't seen it for the sake of this video, I'm just going to kind of describe the last couple years of my life before meeting the Lord in a little bit of a nutshell. I was highly addicted to marijuana. I started to develop an alcohol addiction. I was very depressed and alone and sad. And overall, I just felt like I didn't know what the point and purpose of my life was it was like i just had this huge void in my life and it was probably what some of the darkest times in my life and then i ended up finding out in the beginning of 2019 that i was pregnant now when i first found out i was pregnant i was absolutely terrified and i felt a lot of shame because i wasn't married i was having sex before marriage but it was honestly the turning point of my salvation the turning point of who i was and my daughter completely brought me back to the Lord. So that's kind of where this story starts. When I found out that I was pregnant, I wanted to be the best mom I could be. And I didn't want my daughter to have to go through and live through what I experienced in my life. All of my life, I've basically been depressed and alone and seeking for like this fulfillment in all these other things and that fulfillment was never found and I didn't want my daughter to live that way and feel the way I felt because it was really hard. So when I found out I was pregnant after the initial shock, that's kind of when my relationship with the Lord began to build. I began to pray to him every day, single day and thank God for the life inside of me and I began to pray for her and over her. So that was kind of like the foundation of my relationship with Jesus was just praying and talking to him. It wasn't till my daughter was born that I actually started to do things besides praying to grow closer to the Lord. So when my daughter was born, I just felt like this need and desire to get him to get to know him better. So I wanted to read the Bible in my life. I'm sure like many of you, I had tried to read the Bible here and there, but I couldn't understand it. It was just like a foreign language to me, you know? And so I tried, but I couldn't really understand. And so I thought that I would just start by reading the children's Bible. I think you could say at that point I had everything I wanted in my life. I had always wanted to be a mom and I think with that new life and with that new role there came a, a new like kind of just time and season of happiness and joy but there was still a void and I just thought to myself whoa I like am not depressed anymore you know, I still struggle like here and there, but I do not have that like spirit consuming me any longer. I have this beautiful, amazing daughter and a family, but there's still something missing. So I think that just really spoke volumes to me that like there's something very serious and I still need something more. And it was also at that point that I realized that I needed, needed Jesus. And I had always believed. So it was just like, I finally came to this point in my life where it's like, all right, I need him. Like I have everything and I'm still lacking immensely so I became more intentional with uh, growing closer to the Lord and I decided that I was going to read my daughter's children's bible just one what I would say was one random afternoon I wanted to read it and before this I kind of had like more touches and I just wanted a foundation you know I've heard about stories about you know Jesus walking on water, you know, Jonah and the big fish and all this stuff. So I just wanted to get an overall understanding. So I started at the very beginning of this Bible. And then an evening or so later, I get to the last couple pages where it talks about the Last Supper and it talks about Jesus's crucifixion. When I got towards the end of Luke 22 in this children's Bible, that's when I really felt the Spirit of God start to fall upon me. When they were 
having the last supper and Jesus knew that he was about to die, something just hit me so hard and I began to weep and cry. So then I go on to um, Luke 22 continuing on and it talked about how Jesus they were in the garden and praying and Jesus felt so sad. And when I read those words, like felt very sad. It just resonated with me because sadness is something I felt my entire life. And it says that Jesus knew the soldiers were coming and he knelt down and prayed and asked God to help him. And his disciples were no help. They all fell asleep. And this was just like, whoa, like Jesus was about to do something so big and so incredible and amazing. And he still did it. And his disciples couldn't stay up for him. So I can't even imagine the pain that he felt and just like the loneliness. And then it says that God sent an angel to make Jesus strong and brave. And then I was just like, whoa, like I'm, I can be strong and I can be brave. Like I can feel the feelings of sadness, but also be brave. And like, I guess like it was just like things I've never like really heard or things that like never really sunk in. So then it talks about Jesus getting captured, Judas denying him, Peter lied about knowing Jesus. And then it goes on to talk about Jesus dying. And you guys, when I got to this page, it just hit me. Like, it was like my moment was finally here, you guys. After living, what, I think it was 21 years without the Lord, without having a relationship with the Lord from the very beginning of my life, girl, till 21, y'all. My moment came by reading this and... I had no idea it was about to happen. I had no idea that this was going to change my entire life forever. When I got to the part in Luke 23 where it talks about Jesus on the cross dying for me, you guys, I had the biggest revelation in my entire life. My entire life, I felt like I was searching for this type of love, the type of love that I felt like I wanted and deserved and I needed and the type of love that I never got, the type of love that I always looked to in men and in relationship and in friendships and substances. It was like, whoa, like someone loves me so much that they literally died for me and it just sent me and I just felt the spirit of God just pour out over me and I'm like this is it I finally found it the love that I've been searching and longing for that huge void in my life like this is it and it's a man named Jesus and how amazing because he has always been there for me but it was like I finally saw him for who he was and when I just learned that he literally died for me and he thought about me and it is that personal you guys if you're watching this and you think Jesus died for me, yes, he was literally thinking about you and all the stuff that you've done and you are going to do. He was willing to die for you. Like a love like that, nothing can top that. A love so big that someone sent their only son to die for me. It was just like, whoa, like I made it and I'm here and I am so loved. And I was just like, I don't have to live with this void any longer. And it was just so beautiful. And I just felt true love just pouring over me and falling over me. And at this time, I was sitting on my bed with my little baby girl. I think she was maybe three, four, maybe five months old. She was an infant and she was napping next to me. And it was like, she had no idea that her mom's moment of salvation was there. And it wasn't like this huge show, right? It was this alone, precious moment with me and the Lord in my own room, like away from everyone. <sighs> Oh, praise the Lord. And so after that, everything changed and I got to the very end of my little daughter's Bible with tears pouring out. I will put the picture right here. Something just told me you need to take a picture of this. And now I'm able to remember my literal date and time of salvation, you guys, because after I got to the end, I literally closed this book and I was just crying and praising God. And I was just asking for forgiveness because I lived so long without him. And even when he was there for me, when he was trying to reach me, I denied him. And I just said these words I said God I see that you have chased me my entire life even when I denied you even when I ignored you even when I was practicing false religion and I said Lord and now I'm gonna chase you as hard as you chased me and you guys that was it it was a wrap and I was just launched into a whole new world and a whole new life I finally accepted Jesus truly as my Lord and Savior and then after that I was so on fire and I was so encouraged I ended up finding my home church which is really amazing because you guys my home church I had actually been to a handful of times I've only been to one church here and God said girl you don't need to go anywhere else this is your home this is where I'm gonna plant you and then it's just so beautiful because now I'm serving in ministry for two years at the same church I used to walk into high as a kite trying to find the Lord but just not there yet like I just hadn't had my touch so it was just so amazing how that worked out because 
I started to go back to this church and I realized that every time I would go before I was saved, I would always cry and I would just say, it's because I'm mad at God. It's because I'm angry at him. But really it was his spirit pouring out over me and I was so overwhelmed and my spirit inside of me, the spirit of God inside me was like, girl, we're trying to get out of here. We're trying to go, you know? So after this amazing encounter in my moment of salvation, and really accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior and walking with him. I got plugged into my church. I started watching them online at first. And then um, they opened back up because it was like the time of COVID. And at the time, um, you know, they're still tr trying to figure out how to navigate it. But now we learn and know you don't ever close the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord keeps going and we are the church. So we keep going, baby girl, no matter what's going on. But I ended up going in person and I got connected with them. And they are just such a true community where they train up extreme disciples it wasn't just so oh, hi welcome no like they brought me and they welcomed me they got me connected and i started to go in, i started going to groups there um i started reading my own bible my sister actually she has special needs and in her room for the longest time she had this like veggie tales bible and i asked her i said chelsea if you're not going to read this do you mind if i have it? she's like yeah you can have it and so my first bible was like passed down to me by my special needed sister in a way and i began reading that and just getting to know god you know increasing my prayer life and through my church i was able to really be discipled and help be raised up in the way of the lord and just get a better idea of like what i'm supposed to be doing and how i can get to know god and yeah fast forward to now um, in a nutshell, my little baby girl who was just so tiny not knowing a thing is now in the house of the Lord praising and worshiping God. She prays. Um, she is a little prayer warrior. She's strong. She's anointed. She is amazing. Um, I've been serving in ministry for two years, like I said, and it's just been amazing. And my life has been forever changed. Um, I'm sober and I'm happy and I'm also learning to continue to accept the love that the Lord has for me. I go to my groups, I'm in my Christian community and it's just been amazing. And I just praise the Lord and thank him so much because when you put it in a real, like just simple, easy to way, you guys, I was so lost. I was so depressed. I literally felt like my life had no meaning. Like if I were to die, I didn't care. Like it didn't matter to me. Like nothing mattered to me. And then I found out about my daughter and it kind of gave me more of a reason to live. And then my daughter is what brought me to the Lord. So it was like this beautiful redemption that I didn't see coming. Like I thought my life is over. I had a child out of wedlock. This is it for me, for her. Everyone's going to shun us, but really like... God changed into something so beautiful and so now I raise my daughter in the house of the Lord and we've just been what is the word I'm looking for we've just accelerated so quickly and amazing but I don't feel that way anymore I don't feel like my life is meaningless I feel like I do have purpose and I am happy and I know that I'm going to go through hard times and hard things but I have someone who loves me and who's always with me and who has good things and good plans for me so that is my Jesus moment the moment of my salvation girl and I have just taken off so I really hope that this encourages you in some way shape or form and I thank you guys for listening to this story all glory be to God and um, may your final touch be soon